Welcome to this presentation on Literature Review Expectations of Project Management Journal. I'm Gary Klein, and along with Ralph Wheeler, we are the co-editors-in-chief. Our intention of this presentation is to help authors prepare their manuscripts to increase the chances of entering the review process and attaining eventual acceptance. One of the major reasons for a rejection is a poor or inadequate literature review. This video is on one of a series of editorials intended to help our authors prepare their manuscripts. Other editorials in the series include what it takes to make a contemporary contribution to the project management journal how to report both qualitative and quantitative studies, and what we consider plagiarism and self-plagiarism. Before we really start, let's recognize that there are two expressions of the literature review that we need to discuss. The first one is the justification for the study. Every single paper that we do requires a literature review. We have to establish what is already known by the research community and what we still need to know. Your study has to be positioned firmly within that framework. The second consideration is that a literature review is also a research methodology. It can help us address a research question, and we can do that through the integration of the knowledge across all of the literature that exists within a field or a subset of it. And we can also use it to compile the cumulative evidence that exists for a certain topic. Every study must establish its position in the current academic dialogue. As authors, you must ground your case in the introduction by integrating what you know about the topic. The expectations for the study might require development beyond current understanding for a line of inquiry, integration of separate discourses, or even the introduction of a novel perspective that may conflict or coexist with current thought. Regardless of the intent, you must convince readers that the chosen phenomena or theory require further study or development. Early charting of fundamental and subsequent work justifies the research, sets the theoretical framework, and leads to the development of novel research questions. First, you have to identify those prior studies through extensive searching and reading. You have to critically examine the content of the identified papers, then refine and repeat. When you're searching, you're building a tree. The trunk is a collection of fundamental papers on the phenomena or theory. The large branches represent major perspectives that guide separate streams in the literature. The smaller branches are significant studies that alter context or extend theory you must place your study into that tree and it requires growing a new branch. It might be a major branch if the study is wholly new or it might be a lesser branch if it's an extension to establish theory. It may be that only a small fraction of the literature you located is required to build your case in the introduction. However, what you've identified is critical throughout the remainder of the paper as well, because after the introduction, most presentations slip into a deeper discussion of the background. Here, one must engage the prior research to build the logical argument for any hypotheses or set the direction for exploration and explaining why your study is an essential contribution. Your choice of methodology is also informed by prior studies. For example, choosing appropriate samples, 
the constructs and measures you use, the controls you have to apply. Then finally, in the discussion section, you have to entrench your ideas into the ongoing dialogue of scholars in the field. Only when you connect your study to the broad literature have you demonstrated the value added of your study. When writing your paper, here are some tips to consider to maintain credibility. The first is to use those papers most relevant to project management and to the theoretical grounding of your study. Don't include extraneous papers that have no relation just to increase the presence of articles from the journal to which you are submitting. There is also a balance to be struck between the foundational papers and authors in the discipline, as well as maintaining an up-to-date review. We see many papers cross our desk that have only two or three papers cited from the last 10 years. One final consideration is to avoid listing by the authors of papers. For example, we often see a style that starts every sentence with the author name, such as Turner said, then Mintzberg said, then Fleeberg said, and so on. This structure leads to a repetition of findings or puts the findings together in an unrelated fashion. So it does not help you build a cohesive story around the phenomena. If a single paper has the force of evidence to inform readers about a phenomena or theory, consider the evidential strength of the collective body of work. Indeed, that is the purpose of a literature review. Little consensus exists about the different types of literature reviews that can be used as a methodology. We will use the structure provided by Schneider in the Journal of Business Research. The systematic review appears at one end of a spectrum. Systematic reviews seek specific answers to a research question. They use a defined repeatable search method. They can use quantitative or qualitative analysis depending upon the nature of the articles that are collected. A meta-analysis is an example of a quantitative approach, whereas a consolidation of evidence is usually conducted for the qualitative approach. An integrative or critical review will have a variety of research questions that have the purpose of arriving at a theoretical model, framework, or taxonomy. The search process is limited typically because of a large body of work that may exist. The search often begins with the foundational works in the field and then logically proceeds to other works based upon the critical analysis in a very progressive fashion. A content analysis is typically conducted over the claims made in the papers. A narrative review typically considers a broad range of literature with equally broad research questions and a purpose that focuses on the understanding of complex areas. Analysis techniques often follow the, those in the integrative review, conducting a thematic or content analysis. The objective is to characterize the state of knowledge of a particular topic from multiple perspectives. The result is often the discovery of specific themes or sometimes an historical overview. If it, you can find many fine examples of literature reviews. I'm gonna provide just a small sample. Denicole and his colleagues look into the causes and cures of megaproject performance problems. They have a defined research question and they follow a repeatable search in seeking the articles appropriate. They effectively consolidate the evidence and present it through a series of tables that clearly explain the results and the foundations that they located. 
Mueller and colleagues consider governance in the realm of projects derive an initial framework for organizational enablement and surface propositions about the relationships among process facilitators, discursive abilities, organizational enablers, governments, and governmentality. In a classic work, Brown and Eisenhart study innovation research to identify three unique historical streams of study, build a model of each, and suggest possible paths for future research based upon relationships and concepts not well defined or even missing. Each of these articles makes a significant contribution to the discipline but none of them follow a pure strategy with regards to following either a systematic narrative or integrative review. Instead, they combine elements from some of each to come up with the most effective approach possible. You can we propose several items in order to achieve success in your literature review. The first is to go out and examine the resources that are out there. There are books, there's articles. You can find many of them in the reference list to this editorial. Do not confuse a review with the search. The search remains simply a list of articles that can be randomly or categorically organized. Make sure that you are aware of your biases and evaluate existing studies critically but fairly. Arrange them into a logical framework for presentation. Report your results through clearly designed tables and figures that effectively communicate the process you followed and justify your results. Lastly, consider a review paper to be a research project with all of the attending requirements for rigor relevance and value. I thank you for your attention and hope that you find this information useful in the preparation of your submissions. If you have any questions, please feel free to approach either of us. You may also find a good deal of information on our journal's homepage on the SAGE publishing website at the address below. And you may also find other videos of interest on our YouTube channel.